Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, this is a viewer question, but it's a simple one. It's actually going to be really quick to read. And I'm curious to get your comments in the comments below. But it basically says this. It says, uh, just one question, how did you get into comics? Cool. Nice, easy question. Um, for me, you know, I got into comics super young. And in many cases, it was... I, I remember going to the library and looking for something to read. And this would be... I don't know. I mean, very, very young. And this library had a bunch of these hardcover collected editions of Fantastic Four uh, and X-Men. And they were the originals. They were like the X-Men number one through, I don't know, like 24. So there's a bunch of comics. And they're in these these really uh, dull looking covers. So the, the binding was just, you know, like solid blue. And it just said X-Men. There was no imagery at all. It was just X-Men. And I open it up, and there's all this amazing art. And I remember looking at Fantastic Four and seeing this Jack Kirby stuff, and it was like, I, mind was blown. I mean, I, I had to have been, ah, God, I mean, first or second grade. And it was just, it was amazing. And so I picked it up, and I started reading through it. And what was amazing to me is it felt like it was a comic book. I mean, it, was, it felt like it was four kids. But it didn't feel like it was talking down to me. It felt like it was uh, it was concepts clearly above what I was reading elsewhere. And I had been a big, uh, you know, very very early on, uh, my parents got me into these um, uh, kind of these these classic books, so like uh, Treasure Island and and all these. But these books are small; they're almost they're like Tonkabon size, and a little bit smaller than that, kind of square. And they had um, every page had a picture. So it was like you had a page of text and a picture to go along with every single page. And it was all the, like, again, it was all the the Sherlock Holmes stuff. They had, uh, you know, Three Musketeers, uh, Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn, kind of all these kind of classic books. And everything had, a, had an image. I remember thinking, this is really cool. It's like, you know, it's like a comic, but it's a book. And they were, they were incredible. I mean, as a, you know, again, if you were young and you didn't really you hadn't learned the words on the page it was new to you what you would do is you would read the page and you would try and look at the picture and figure out what you didn't understand from the image it was like the image was kind of a, a subtle clue or a help to what was going on and so it was great for reading i mean i i was reading at an extremely early age but i hit that fantastic four x-men i remember the avengers was in there um there's a handful of them so it was definitely started with marvel but started with those very early uh, books, and it, it, was, it felt like the natural evolution to these books that I was reading, where you had the text on one page and the images on the second. You had comics that were exploring big things, and I remember thinking that this was the past and the future. So the past were all these classics, you know, Great Expectations, and all these kind of uh, classical books, and it was kind of like a comic. And then I, I, you know, picked up the other book, and then you got that Jack Kirby felt like absolutely the future. And what's weird is, you know, even as I'm reading them, this be the kind of the very late seventies uh, or early eighties. Um, it was, I, I'm, I'm reading these book, these comics and the, you know, clearly the, the characters and the situations are from the sixties, but even my, you know, my young brain can figure that out. And it's like, this is older, but it still felt like the future to me because you have this stuff. And I remember fantastic Four I had several volumes and I remember reading up to the, First appearance, Silver Surfer, Galactus, and and thinking, bah, this is amazing. You've got this, you know, my mind is opened up to all these kind of cosmic principles, life on other planets, how it was sci-fi in the future. And what was funny is I remember many, many years later that the superhero aspect kind of dawned on me because that was kind of the last thing to click. The science fiction aspect, kind of this this bigger world, this, this uh, imagination that goes beyond the mundane. That was what was so cool about comics. They had power, sure, but I didn't see them as Kate books. I saw them as, you know, as more than that, as, as this bigger storytelling that was going on. Um, and it was, it was just, it was very, very cool. Now, I was very, very fortunate. I had parents who did not uh, view comics as cheating or bad reading. And, um, you know, my father, who was in education, brought comic books heavily into the classroom. You know, he had the ability to do that at his level, so he would he would bring these same kind of graphic novels into the schools. The school libraries had them and everything else. And it was, uh, you know, I remember teachers complaining. Like, uh, I remember I hit some class, 
And the teacher was like, well, you can't do a book report on the Fantastic Four. It's not a book. And I remember my father coming in and having my back being like, no, this is a book. Tons of reading, imagination, all that. It absolutely accounts, qualifies. And frankly, you know, this is a better way to teach kids comics. And that was, that was, it was great. And so I remember him, him having that argument several times. Uh, but that was how I got in. So what, what, that was kind of step one. And then, you know, it got in, you know, basically I ran out of comics and I remember thinking, did these comics just end or are they still going? And that's when, you know, I'm, I start noticing on the newsstand at, in the grocery stores and other places, oh, the comics are there. And then it's Fantastic Four number, you know, whatever it was, like 180 or I, I don't know, I, I'm getting the numbers wrong. But anyway, there was a gap between where these hardcover, really cool books ended and what was on the newsstand. And so I'm like, well, I have to start buying what's on the newsstand now. And then I get introduced to incredible, uh, you know, Batman and Superman, Legion of Superheroes, all these other books, because they didn't have DC in the libraries. But I'm like, oh, my God, there's a whole other world. And that was, again, mind-blowing for me. It's like there's this entire universe of creativity here that is the Marvel Universe. Um, but then uh, what amazing gift for people. You've got a, a completely second universe going on um, at the same you got you got a, you got a whole a whole second universe I would just I just remember as a kid like being completely amazed that you had these these amazing worlds of imagination but not just one you had two completely different publishing companies doing their own thing and it was incredible to me I remember many many years later people would come in and say I don't think people understand like the difference between Marvel and DC and it's really hard for normies to wrap their heads around that not at all. You know, I, I, I mean, you know, eight-year-old me, no problem. You've got, uh, you've got, it, I mean, it's not that hard. It's like in this, in this comic universe, you got Superman. In this comic universe, you have Captain America. Not that hard. Not the, not the most difficult concept to wrap your head around. So very, very cool. So I, I start to, but I'm looking at the newsstand. I'm like, now I'm pissed because there's this gap. So I, I kind of ignore the gap. And I just start reading what, what I can get my hands on at the grocery store, at the newsstand, convenience store, etc. And um, very, very at this point, now I've got a lot more options. So now I'm not bound. I read everything that was in the library. I love that kind of stuff. But now I'm like, okay, I like Legion of Superheroes quite a bit. I like the X-Men quite a bit. Uh, the Avengers kind of cheesy. I, I mean, we're not as fond of that. Um, that would change a little later on. But I mean, th then my, my kid brain is like trying to discern what I'm getting. And my goal was to get as much as possible. So here's where I'm like, okay, how do I now go earn more money so I can buy, you know, all the books I need to, I can't stop with just this. I mean, you got contest of champions out there. You got secret wars out there. I mean, like I've got to buy them all now. And uh, I, I was one of those kids who was always kind of pissed when the toys came out and you had like secret wars toys and they had these shields where you could pop open the shield and put a little like piece of hologram cardboard into the shield. And we're like, this is complete bullshit. There were no shields. No, like they, they were Spider-Man didn't run around with a shield. What is this? What what kind of garbage is this? Did these toy makers even read the comics? This would be uh, clearly the uh, early stage of what you know outrage YouTube channels would become. Like they're, they're, this is this is uh, corporate bullshit. There is no shield. Spider-Man does not carry shields. Not being authentic to the comic. Who do these people think they're fooling? Uh, that that's you know that's, that's how I was absorbing this kind of stuff. But uh, but uh, anyway, so the next step for me is to realize, hey, there are, um, you know, there are yard sales. There's, uh, what, what are they, you know, these swap meets kind of places. What, what are these? Uh, anyway, um, I, I, and then I learned, you know, oh, there's comic shops. So now my goal is to go into the comic shops and bridge the gap between what I read at the, uh, at the library and what's on the newsstand because I want to know this missing piece of these comics history. So now I'm, I'm in the comic shop trying to figure that out and I'm buying through these issues and, and trades were complete ass at the time. There's very little of them. And so, you know, I, my imagination had tried to fill in the gaps on its own of, I wonder, you know, I wonder what happened with this story. I wonder, I'll bet it, I'll bet it was something like this. And then you get to buy the comics and you get to open them up and you're like, Oh, I was totally wrong. It was this and this and this. And then I also get to go back in time, like I, I discovered Legion of Superheroes, now I want to go back and read all those original comics. So anyway, it was, it was a wonderful, the, the amazing part of comics, and this is the thing that I feel is, uh, I don't want to say, I mean, uh, maybe lost, uh, lost is probably the best word, where you just, it, it, it 
we've lost this, is that the, the, the biggest happiness was this joy of discovery, was this idea that I don't know what's going on in the comics. Uh, I don't, I've missed this stuff, but, I, but now I get to go on a quest. For lack of a better word, I get to go try and find these missing comics, and that was really fun. I, I imagine it wouldn't have been as fun, and probably comics wouldn't have hooked me as much if you had digital as an option. It's like, well, I could just subscribe to Marvel Unlimited and, and get all this, this stuff. You know, I, I, it wouldn't have been as fun. I wouldn't have enjoyed it. I, it would have uh, taken something away from this amazing journey of having to go to the comic shop. This comic shop doesn't have anything. Well, you know, the family's going to take a trip to California here in about two months. We've got to, I'm going to tell my parents, like, they're, they're like, well, we, we're going to Disneyland and we're going to go to, you know, Marine World, which is <laughs> dead now, but we're going to go to, uh, you know, not very far. We're going to go all these places. And I'm like, we got to make sure we go to some comic shops down there because I've got this list written down on yellow lined paper of these comics that they don't have in the comic shops back where I live. And we got to go fill in these gaps. And so I, so I'm, I'm going to those comic shops and I, you know, I remember then I discovered at one point I can actually phone to those shops and I'm like, Hey, I'm looking for this stuff. So I'm irritating. Those guys. Anyway, that entire experience was wonderful. It was, uh, there was, there was something very magical in that experience of going to try and find these comics and find where, you know, where, where you can, how, how you get, how you get it. And, and so that's, and, and then ultimately, you know, being part of that system, like, you know what I need to do? I need to open up a comic shop. I need to, this is, this is wonderful. So I'm going to take a lot of these comics that I bought over the years. I don't like as much and that's my starter. And then I'm going to go to a bunch of kind of these, uh, you know, the, these swap meets and other things. And I'm going to go buy some of those. And, and that's, that's how I got into that. But that, that's my journey in comics. It was a fun journey. I loved it. Um, that's, and, and you'll notice though, big parts of what I just mentioned, are gone today. If you go to the library, um, I'm noticing because my daughters are now trying to get into it, and, then, and I've told them, they're like, I, I want to, my older daughter's like, I want to see this Jack Kirby guy you talk about. And it's like, oh, sorry, because the libraries don't have much of that. They've got, uh, you know, the new edition, you know, they've got the, you know, Iceman by Cena Grace, but they do not have the, you know, the, they don't have the classics. They have just the current stuff. And that's that's a bummer. That's, you know, that, so that she doesn't get to enjoy that, which is which is a shame. And then the newsstand doesn't exist anymore. So that casual being able to go in there and kind of realize that there's a bigger world than what you can just get in your library as a kid is gone. And so all that's left is the comic shop. The comic shops increasingly make their money off of Funko Pops and off of, uh, you know, certainly back issues, but the collector market's in there. I mean, if you're a kid just trying to, you know, get to, to come to enjoy comics, a big parts of that chain that I talked about in my journey they don't exist anymore. And I know that, you know, it's easy, it's, it's easy bait for a guy like Mumbles to come in and go, you know, ah, this is just Perch talking about being old. I hear you. But in this one instance, I think Mumbles can, you, know, you can soften his heart just a tiny bit. It's like the Grinch. Your heart can grow by two and realize that, you know, for all of us, people like Spawn, people who like, uh, people who, who join the comic journey, uh, the, the shame of it is, you know, that, that mechanism that, allowed us to grow up and, and embrace this hobby and, and love it is gone. It's, it's, you know, it, it doesn't exist anymore. And so it's just, you know, passing a time and everything else. Yes, it, it parts of it are old fashioned, but uh, that, that's a big loss. I mean, it's a, it's a major loss we've had as a, you know, as a society for lack of a better word. Uh, it's not just about comics. I mean, these things, opened up my imagination, got me to think about kind of different ways of doing, got me to grapple with tough moral issues at a very early age, you know, like the video for a while back, should Reed Richard save Galactus or not? What, you know, what does that mean? I mean, imagine that once upon a time, you know, we, you at age seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, you know, that age, you were wrestling with these big moral dilemmas. You know, should Nick Fury go back in time and kill Hitler? Would that be good? You know, what does it mean to change the past? What does it mean to bear the brunt of the responsibility of making a bad decision that costs the life of your uncle? What does it mean to dedicate your life to, you know, stopping criminals and using fear as a way to do it? And does that, you know, is that, is that moral? Like, what does that do? And, and, and I just, these concepts, and let alone just the gift of being able to learn how to read and, and, and tackle these kinds of scenarios, 
I mean, the challenge is, you know, my daughters are into comics. They are more into manga. But one of the reasons is they can get those tougher lessons, those messages in manga. When they pick up comics, uh, those, those, you know, that, that, that mess, that struggling to, to deal with a, a tougher concept, it's been sanitized. It, it, they don't, we don't have that ability anymore. It doesn't, it does, you know, a lot of those comics are, are there. The indie comics are still carrying the torch, certainly. But if you pick up, um, if you pick up an average Marvel book, it's, you know, it's tough to understand what greater, you know, message is there for the reader to think about. In many ways, a reader isn't told to think. The reader is just told, here's a comic, here's a story, here's how it is consumed. And they, they give you the answer. One of the best parts about a lot of the comics, stuff that Mark Grunwald used to write for Cap, for example, is he, you know, you, you knew, you, you could sense what Grunwald's opinion on these things were. You, you know, Grunwald was, by all accounts, you know, Democrat, left-leaning. I don't know what that means in the 80s versus 2020. I, I think a left-leaning Democrat in the 80s is probably a, you know, white supremacist, far-right extremist based on 2020 rules. But anyway, I, I, I like to get into that. But you can see that you could, you, could, you could suss out what Grunwald thought as a person. But he wrote his comics in such a way that, you know, you got to decide what the right answer was. It wasn't handed to you. As a reader, you've got to figure out, you know, what is the role of superheroes? What should Captain America do? What does it mean if the Red Skull is perpetuating these kind of hate crimes? And, and obviously he's, he's being evil, but, but should you go kill him? Should you try and throw him in jail? Should you, uh, you know, is, is Captain America would struggle at times with like, I, you know, I'm beating up the Red Skull's followers, but these people have been duped by the Red Skull. The right answer is to get to, to him and try and figure out how to stop that hatred message from going in the first place, rather than, you know, attacking anyone who gets swayed by. In fact, Captain America would say things like the Red Skull's message is very compelling to a lot of people who are, you know, impoverished and poor and, and struggling. And, you know, it, it's a, that's why it's so hard to fight against, because it, it appeals to people and, and not appeals to their worst instincts, but it appeals to their desperation. And this is why we have to come with a better argument. It was, it was just the, this was this was great. So that's that's my um, that's my journey into comics, and I'm really interested to hear yours. So in the comments below, what are yours? How do you how do you how did you come to love this? Uh, we hear a lot about why people are leaving it. That there's this message or that message or this this creator or whatever. My, well, I, I only spend. Five dollars at the comic store now. I'm not buying. You know, there's no Marvel comic on my pull. So that's the end of that journey. Tell me more about the beginning. How'd you begin? How'd you start? What got you into comics? I'm curious to hear. Because maybe that's a big clue about how we get it back. How we get people back into this hobby. Anyway, uh, thanks for letting me ramble. Thank you very much for the question. Short and simple. Um, and thanks for listening. 